Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning. We bless, bless your name because you have been good to us. Marvelous and gracious you are. Jesus is Lord. Lord, send us your word of life this morning and impact us with the same word to our profiting in Jesus' name. Uh, I've been talking on the marks of kingdom servanthood. You remember? Kingdom servanthood. That means the kind of servants that hear well done from the master. You remember reading from Matthew 25 and verse 23, the parable of the uh, talents. We had Jesus say, well, what? Done. What's well done in America? There must be something behind. Let's just make a come. Make a come what? Uh -huh, you want to confuse me? Well, they don't understand the only language, actually. Amen. How many wants to hear God say, well done, when the time comes? That's the key. You know, all that we are doing here, you know, the houses we are selling for those selling and buying houses, you know, all that we are doing. Thank God for all those. But the most important in life, right? Is that when you approach him on that final day, you will hear, well done. And there is what it takes to hear, well done. That's what we are talking about. He said, well done, number one, good and faithful. Those are very strong words. Good and faithful servant. Because we are all his servants. That's what some people don't know. They think only the pastors are the servants. Are you following me? No. Every single child of God is a servant of God. That's the mystery about the kingdom of heaven. One of the in, in this world where you have kingdoms, you have citizens, you have subjects essentially in kingdoms. But you know, you might just have subjects because they are all at the pleasure of the king. But in the kingdom of heaven, we are all citizens. We are all his children. In the kingdom of this world, the king has his children or his family. They call the royal family. You understand me? They have some privileged few. They have subjects. They have slaves. But in the kingdom of heaven, we are all sons. We are all his children. But at the same time, we are also his servants. We are his ministers, his servants. Use all those words that you have. He said, well done, you good. You can be a servant and not be a good one. And you are still doing the work. But you are not a good one. That's what we are talking about all this. Good and then faithful. You can be good and not be faithful. It looks strange. Thou good and faithful servant. Why? He said, you have been faithful in the dispense of your assignment. We'll talk more on that later. We are God's servants. We are God's stewards, either or not. And First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2 tells us, it is required of stewards that that man be found, what? Faithful. It is required of a steward that he be found faithful. Essentially, faithfulness is handling another man's business as though it is your own. You understand? You know how you would do your own. You give every of yourself to it. Now you are handling another man's business as though it's your own. That means you are doing it with everything. Not uh, this general. You know, say, well, it's not my business. It's Mula's property. Let the rain carry it. 
You have my point. When, when you seize property, right, you do what you would do to your property, to it. That's it for this. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And servants or stewards must be found faithful. Like I said in the course of this teaching, whether you like it or not, let's face realities. You will die. Some people don't like to hear it. I'm not saying you will die today. I'm not saying you will die tomorrow. But even the two sellers, now they have something here, he died. Do you understand what I'm saying? A Christian or a citizen of the kingdom should not be afraid of death. You will go where your time is due, but should not be afraid of death. You know, I've done a lot of services, but one service I don't like doing is any service that has to do with burial because they lie there too much. The pastor will be forced to lie because you never see a bad man die. Only good people die. <laughs> Oh, they will not say, oh, we are going to miss him. But he said, thank God he has gone. We are free. <laughs> they will be saying, oh, my office, that's not my focus today. But you see, we need to face the realities of life. Every believer needs to live in the consciousness of that day when he or she will stand before the judgment throne of Christ. If you live in that consciousness, it will guide how you live your life today. Because it's the reality of life is coming. I want to stand here that day and hear, well done, right? Thou good and faithful servant. Another reality that I made mention of in the course of this teaching is that the kingdom you are not ready to suffer for is glory you are not worthy of. The kingdom you are not ready to suffer for is glory you are not worthy of. Jesus says you are there which have been with me in my temptations, in my tribulations, I will appoint you a kingdom. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5. It says, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God. This is how God judges in simple form that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God. Can you read the last statement for me, please? Is that clear enough? The kingdom of God judges what you didn't suffer for. The glory you will not taste. We see a lot of um, well-to-do rich people today. Go find out where they began from. Go find out how many pains they went through. Are you following me? The Jesus Master of all that we all celebrate today went through death to gain the applause of today. Philippians 1 verse 29 says, for unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but to also suffer for him. I know you don't like that one. Uh, your pastor must be somebody else this morning to be talking to you like this. For unto you it is given, it is part of your ministry. <laughs> <laughs> on the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him but what to also suffer for not just to suffer to suffer for his sake there are two different things you, you understand me to suffer 
why are you people troubling this girl this morning? When you were our age, were you not doing like that too? Is it not your gene that is speaking? You are not pretending as if he's doing something different. Amen. Listen to me carefully. He said to suffer for his sake. It's very important. We're not just talking of just suffering anyhow. Do you understand me? We're talking of the suffering for the kingdom of heaven's sake. And I'm to just make it a bit easier for you. I told us last week also that don't be afraid of that word suffer. And don't let it look strange to you that I'm saying it. Suffering also including the, includes the sacrifices you make. The self-deniers you go through. The inconveniences you bring upon yourself. You know, Paul says something. Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. He put that on himself. On himself. You understand me? He chose that is the path I am taking. Where you speak like Esther said, I will go before the king at the expense of my life for your sake. Do you understand me? If I perish, I perish. That's somebody giving herself, are you following me? And ready to die for the cause of the kingdom. She was ready for that. And I have the question in closing two weeks ago. That what is it really that you can say you have given up for Christ? You know, Jesus said, there is no man that I, or woman that has left house and found left. You remember that scripture? He said, for me and for the kingdom's sake. And I was asking you, what is it can you really say you have given up for him? All of us know what to get from him. Amen? Jesus is Lord. I said it till the end of this year, and even as we continue this year, I will be teaching on the kingdom because we need to hear the message of the kingdom. Look at Moses. We know the story. You can read it later in Hebrews 11. Moses was raised in the palace of Pharaoh. We know the story, right? I mean, to be raised in the palace, you know what that means. All the enjoyment that goes with it were there. Then one day he came to the reality of who he was. He had a choice. He could stay in the palace and say, I'm not that crazy they are talking about. I don't know what they are talking about. He could stay in the palace. But then, verse 25 of Hebrews 11. I, long, I want you to see one word. What was the first word there? The first word, good, is always your choice. You can choose to be happy where you are. And you can choose to be complaining, grumbling, angry with everybody. It's your choice. Are you following me? Here was the palace with everything that goes with it. Amen? And here, it's not just, you don't understand it. He chose now to be a slave because to leave the palace and identify as a Jew means what? You see, they were under a bondage that time. Now, what the language of scripture? Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God, that's who I am, than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Because it's always a season. <laughs> now, verse 26. Everybody will read this because you will be angry thinking I, I smuggled it inside the Bible for you. But I, I really did it. Let's go. Esteeming what? The reproach of Christ. Greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. Some of us, even where we work, we don't want to appear... As Christians, what well, I mean by this is standing by for what we believe. So they will say you are fanatic. You see, everybody will do, they will not like me again in this 
in this place. You know, they will talk about me. They will be against me. We, we just back off. Are you following me? But here, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater he was excited in it. <laughs> excited. The reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. Why? You see, you will not get this message. I started two weeks ago. I said, anybody that will be able to do this must agree with God's sovereignty. Because the God you don't know, you cannot commit yourself to. <laughs> That's the problem. The reason why some people are fighting this thing is strange. Is they don't know him. They don't know him. They think they do because they come to church Sunday morning. But they, they. Now, the real thing here is the last statement. Can you read it, please? Uh, somebody would know how to read uncomfortable and confident. Read it again, loud. He had respect unto the recompense. What he means is that he knows what is going to happen. He's not a fool. He knows where the real reward is. He knows where the real treasure is. He knows it. He knows that I can't commit myself to this God and, and be a failure. No, no. He, he, and not just because he wanted it immediate. He, he, he had respect unto the recompense of reward. He knows the time of reward will speak. That whatever is it that I give to him today, whatever is it that I lay off today, I lay it off joyfully, are you following me? Excitedly, because I know I will be better at the other end. He, he understood that. That's what we are talking about. Why a lot can today is because they don't understand that. They think this is it. Are you following me? And that's why I said, you must be able to trust on God's sovereignty. That's why Paul said, I know him in whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep whatever is committed unto his hand to the last day. I know him. Even when they took him that they would kill him, he was incomfortable. In fact, when they were in a shipwreck and the Lord appeared and told him, you will stand before Caesar, don't worry. You will come out of this. The following day, you better go and eat because you will still live long. This one you are suffering longer. Because they are stood by me last night, an angel, of him, of whose I am and whom I serve. I know him. If that's in the midst of shipwreck, is there I know him? We are coming out of the other side. Oh, what? That's what keeps people going. Glory to God. That's what makes you give it all up for him. Not because we are a fool, but because you know he's a rewarder. Hebrew tells us that he's a rewarder of them that diligently what? Seek him. So you know it. You know that you know it. You are not just guessing. Glory to God. Jesus is Lord. Faithfulness as a cost. But those who know him bear that cost joyfully. Amen? They bear that cost joyfully. Glory to God. Father, we thank you this morning. Also, last two weeks I told us, which is very important. And until you get these, you, you still have not gotten anything. The last temptation that Satan gave Moses and the children of Israel in Egypt has to do about their money, with their money, money, their resources. There are multitudes today in our churches worldwide who are always there for him but not here 
one of the pastors that came for the school of ministry, I don't want to trust my family because they're lying, was telling me of um, one of his assistant pastors that is always there, but he doesn't give. He doesn't pay tight, he doesn't give. But every other thing is always there. And, and he, he told me, uh, when, when I was traveling there, he was the one I put in charge. I said, never do that again. Don't, don't put him in charge of anything again. He said, but daddy, he's always there. Uh, uh, he's not there. I, I, I can show you more of that from scripture because, you see, your money is you. Okay, you work. Let's, let me just say something. You work 40 hours a week. Or per hour they time you, and, and they, they say this is what you are worth for that one hour, hour right? That's you. They are just giving you a monetary form. That's your worth. A whole you, human being, for one hour is just twenty dollars, and you are celebrating. That's an insult. But let's leave that. But you understand me. Your money, even the Bible says it. Your money is you. We'll talk more about that. Jesus talked of serving only two kinds. You can tell me the two kinds. The two kinds. Mammon and what? You can you are serving either either of them. We talk of the devil, you are wasting your time. You can either serve God or mammon. Mammon is the spirit that governs money. You are praised through money. That's why they say the, the love of money is, is the root of all evil. Anything you can imagine that is evil is the love. Are, are you getting the picture? Even the Bible says money has a lot of things. So when you see how the Bible itself magnifies the place of money, then you know why until you break temptation over money, you have not started with God. That's what some people don't understand. Jesus is law. And like, like I, I said, said everybody will come here to raise your finger. Don't say, of, of what you have given us, we are bringing you this token. God is not looking for your tokens. You are raising your finger. Don't mention that before I collect my microphone. It's not your token he's looking for. We just make statements, you know, that the devil through religion has placed on us for centuries. Glory to God. Okay, let's move forward. I've just gone through a few of um, the last two weeks that I taught on this. Um, I want to go into today because we've talked on the first part of this teaching on the marks of faithful servanthood. Hallelujah. Another mark of faithful servants is that he seeks the mysteries, the knowledge of the mysteries of God. The God you want to work for, you must know. Are you following me? You know who he is. You know what he wants. You know how he wants it. If you, okay, you want to work for me, but you don't know me. How well do you think you'll be able to serve me? Do you get my point? You, you don't, don't know, know what, what I, I like. You don't, don't know what I don't like. So everything you are doing, let's say, you are just doing what I don't like. And you think you have done your best, and I come, and I see it, and I tell myself, I would like, please, this man. Right? And you go talk to somebody, oh, well, that thing you did, you didn't like it. Say, I don't know. Do you get that point? The God you don't know, you cannot serve faithfully. So faithful servants will definitely seek to understand God, His ways, His likes, His dislikes. And how do you get to do that? It's all through His Word. But another dimension I want to show you this morning, come with me to Matthew chapter 5. Verse 19. Many of us, if not all of us, at one time or the other, we come across people who have challenges. We try to encourage them, right? Even 
uh, give me when he's playing soccer on Sunday morning. Can you imagine? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, no soccer. Sunday morning, soccer. Is that how they do in Congo? Now, when you are playing soccer, right? And you get to the, uh, let's say it's half time or after the game. And one of your friends comes and say, I'm having some serious issues with one thing or the other. You now want to counsel that friend, right? It's not always about anything. How many of you have counseled somebody before in your life? I want to see. Everybody I know, right? I want to show you a scripture today from Matthew chapter 5, verse 19. Jesus said, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, it shall be called. In fact, if I go to Job, you will see another dimension. Job said, Your words have instructed many. You have strengthened the weak hands. Now it comes to you. And you are crying. That means like uh, Pastor Aminu now. Somebody comes and says, Oh, this is what I'm going to in my place of work. Oh, he said, Oh, God will take control. Then he gets to his place of work the following morning. The same thing happens to him. And I say, Oh, God, why are all these? Do you get the picture? That's what he's saying. So whatever is it that you are using to counsel others, you must abide by yourself. <laughs> you get my point? Whatever, because if you if you look at it as he's talking to only pastors, pastors are worse in that regard. Let's forget pastors. Let's come to the general congregation. Everybody, your friends, your relatives, your colleagues, even your enemies, whatever you hate, this is the kingdom principle. Shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, it shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and uh, teach them, you see the word do first, shall be called great. That is the, it's a kingdom principle. Amen? We are stewards of his word, of his principles, of his lifestyle. But before you can be a faithful steward, you must be a practitioner of the same. Like I said, I don't teach much about giving and all that because you won't receive what I teach you. You'll be angry. But that's what I'm doing. You only need to be around me. I can't teach pastoral ministry in the Bible school, but I'm going to teach in the next school because they won't want to be pastors again. I'm telling you. Because if I teach you my style, I don't think you would like to be a pastor. Because it's, so what kind of punishment is this one? But you see, the Bible dictates that whatever you want to teach or counsel or offer somebody else from him, you must be a doer of the same. That's the kingdom lifestyle. That's, That's the kingdom, kingdom lifestyle. lifestyle. There is um, a ministry in Nigeria that does not pay his staff well. And, and somebody said, but you know him, why not talk to him? He should pay his pastor as well. I said, well, well, I'm the worst person to talk to him on that. Because if he just use me against all of you, he knows I don't take salary. So, so if I don't take that, that if I operate by faith, he knows that. He said, but I want them to be like, in the moment I mention it, he said, maybe I should even cut it, because I want them to do what you are doing. Please understand what I'm saying. The kingdom, as set up by God, is set up with definite culture, lifestyle. When you say you are a citizen of the kingdom of heaven, you must live that life among men. That's why the Bible says, let them see your, let your light shine, shine. They will see your good works. And they know this is a different person. And they will glorify your Father, which is where? In heaven. 
we are citizens of heaven. I'm going to start a series of that next week so that we come to understand what we're talking about. We're not just Christians among people. No, we are completely different. And we are called of God, are you following me, to live that life among many and in so doing impact our world with the nature of the kingdom. Now, I show you another one, verse 20. Jesus now said, <laughs> For I say unto you, this is why I'm saying all of these things, because, like I said, a lot of us are living on the heart as if this is it. We don't even have consciousness of where we are going. So we just do things. But it's not so. There are consequences. And he, he said all these things there in the book, but when we read them, we just leave them and go to, my God shall prosper you and give you 1,000 reward of whatever, 1,000 percent. Ah, you have been doing, claiming the 1,000 percent, you have never seen 1 percent yet. Like Paul will say, it's not my intention to make you sorrowful by my writing, but I must tell you, this is the truth. Now, can you read verse 20 for me? Jesus said, for I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no case enter the kingdom of heaven. It's not automatic. And who knows what the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees is? Who can tell me in one statement? One statement. In French? Uh, tell me in French. Uh -huh, you are getting close. What? The righteousness of the Pharisee in one statement. Who can tell me? Uh, you are all close. I didn't say in one word. In one statement. Huh? 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 Living a fake life. I know, that's, that's why now it's from you, and I say not word, statement. That, that you know when you said, even she said religion, I said you are getting close. Because the Pharisees know how to preach everything, but they don't do. You get my picture now. That's why I started. Don't be teaching what you don't do. They will preach. They will preach fantastic sermons, but uh, no. They don't do. Hypocrisy. We go about, like I've said this many times before, as when you come across a friend who is having some crisis, and you discover he or she is not born again, the next thing you say is, you see, you have to give your life to Christ, because when you give your life to Christ, all your problems will go. Is that not what you say? Is that not? Eh? Oh, that's how we preach, but I'm asking you that since you gave your own to him, how many of your problems have gone? You, you understand me? That's what we say in general terms. But is it that that statement is wrong? Not really. But it's a statement out of context because he didn't promise you that. In fact, he said, if they persecuted me or, or boss, they will persecute you much more. Are you following me? He didn't promise you that. We just give it in a sense. And I say when you come to him, yeah, things will change. Oh, they should change if you know what to do. So how do we get at this? Because many things we do, we don't even know what it says about it. Professing to live a life, sorry, professing a life that we don't live. And unconsciously we say these things because we are not truly aware of who God is and his word. And that's why 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 Paul writing to Timothy used one word. The first word there, what is the first word? 2 Timothy 2.15. What is the first word? What is the first word? 
was we'll studying study Hamaric, Apostle. It's, it's not strong enough. Because, because study must shake your body. Amen? Amen. Study. What, what are we to study? study? The Rwandan, Rwandan Constitution? Constitution. Because I've been watching some documentaries on Rwanda these days. I almost became a Rwandan myself. You know? Study. What are we to study? Not read. What's the difference between study and read? Apostle. Well, well, his wife is almost here, here so his face, face has been radiating differently, you know. So, he's, he's, he's counting, he's not doing anything now, but counting, about counting calendar, calendar every day. Study! That's, That's the, the word, word. yeah. He yeah. must be a religious leader. <laughs> that grammar internalized, you know. Only religious leaders can use that kind of word. Amen? Amen. Have, Have you gone, gone to where religious leaders are preaching the kind of grammar they bring out? You wonder whether you went to school in the first place. <laughs> Study. Yes, we are all getting it. Study is different from just read. You read to study, don't misunderstand me. But like he said, it's deeper. You are in it. You are comparing one with the other. You are analyzing. Are you following me? You are trying to get to the bottom of it. I know you will still go there. <laughs> Amen? Now, everybody look up again. He said, study. Why do you need to study? So that you can show yourself approved of God. Many of us read, that's if we remember at all. But to study is tougher. And when you study, you won't get to that point. Study to show yourself approved unto God because you are a workman. The Bible says we are his workmanship. We are all called to work for him. Whether you are a pastor or not, it has nothing to do with it. Are you following me? A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You remember I said. A servant, a servant of God, or faithful, faithful servant, servant, must get to know him and understand him. Jesus is Lord. Let, Let me read it in another translation. translation. He says, make every effort to present yourself before God as a proven worker. <laughs> Who does not need to be ashamed? A proven, make effort. You find time to know him, to know what he wants, to know what he's saying, to know how to live with him, to know how to work with him, to know what he wants you to do from his word. That's why Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. Remember? but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. What we call the Great Commission today, making disciples of all nations, teaching all nations. Can you teach what you don't know? Let me full stop there. It's not just what you don't know. You can know and see, teach, but can you? No, you can't even know and teach. How do I want to put Can you teach what you don't understand? That's the key word I want. Because understand is higher, right? You are able to. And if I'm your kind of student, uh, you are in trouble. Because the kind of question I will ask you, my lecturers don't like me asking them questions. And that's why even as a teacher, my students are in trouble. Because when I ask questions, they just jump to answer. You don't jump to answer my question. I remember that before the bishop banned me from writing exam in winners again. Because I used to write exam, and when I write exam, nobody passes. So one time we wanted to, 1996, we were to take in a new set of pastors. 
and, and many of them, them most of them he knows yes yeah, yeah, yeah you are coming to be in the pastorate yes but we say we have to follow process they have to write exam they have to do interview then they gave me to write the exam and all his favorite candidates failed because they, they know too much he said to you you will not write exam for anybody in this church again it's easy to come in but you because my questions can be very simple but, but you must understand, understand it before you can answer it. Then, I, I think he still allowed me to run. I took a course on the Holy Spirit. After that, in Wolf Bible School, and then they told him everybody, only one person passed. And because uh, it's a very simple question. And it's, my, my first question is very simple, and it's 50%. And it is, what is the Holy Spirit? Over to you. What is the Holy Spirit? Is that not a simple question? And they wrote fantastic passages. Once I see you are writing more than one line, I just say fail. I don't need to read it. You write more, no, fail. No, 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 no. no. Because I want you to correct me. To say, no, only, and only one person did it. That the Holy Spirit is not a what, it's a who, is a person. So your question is wrong. How many of you will be bold to correct your teacher? That's where I'm going. So, so after, after that day, he said, I want you before you didn't listen. Now, it's a decree. You, you don't write exam for anybody again, but I'm, I'm free to write exam for you here. So maybe I should start again. But what am I saying? What you don't understand, you can teach. Understand them. Understand them. If you have to be a faithful servant of the kingdom, then you must understand them. And in understanding him, you stay on his word. You remember the early church, Acts 4, Acts 2, 42? The Bible says they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. They are not like us today. Many of you, I know you, are, you can make Wednesday service, but you chose not to come. Because you are, you are Sunday, Sunday Christian. And we are enjoying our Wednesday meetings, right? Those who come, because we are studying the book of Ephesians. And uh, we've been doing good. We're, We're not, not rushing it. We're, We're not Russians. Russians. You just take it step by step. You have to have value, drive to know him, to be a faithful servant of his. Let me move fast. And there's another word I want to pick out on the word. Come with me to Isaiah 66. There's a word there. Maybe, Maybe I should, should say because of time. He said, they that tremble at my word. You, know, you remember that? How many of you tremble? The they word said, don't do this. And you quake. Or you say, I don't care. care. This, this, is, this is 21st century. century. This new generation. The <laughs> <laughs> Bible is written in all time. He, he said, said that, tre what's trembling? Am I tremble? Betty, what's tremble? Yeah, yeah Betty is our professor. professor. Tremble. Huh? Uh, I'm not asking you. I'm asking the professor. What is tremble? Why are you saying the same thing? Tell me something else. Huh? Yeah, and I ask her because I know that's my professor. Anybody, Anybody that, that says, says anything in America until Betty says correct, correct is not correct. correct. Amen? He said, they that, that, God said, they that, that, that tremble at my word. Have you, you heard that? that? I, I just, just wanted to see, go to verse 2. For all those things are mine, he said, I mean, anything, anything you think you give me, you can give a million dollars here today now. God said, that's not what moves me. Are you following me? Of course, I will collect it. For all those things are my hand made. And all those things have been, said the Lord. But watch, to this man will I what? Up. To this man will I look. What kind of man will God look at? Eh? Him that is poor and of a contrite spirit. He's not talking of poverty of money. He's talking of, you know, just as a blessed are you that are poor in spirit. And that trembles at my word. The one that places value on my word. Don't play games with it. 
Amen. Amen. The, the one, one that places value, that, that trembles at my word. Trembles at my word. Listen, Listen to me. me. It's, it's your responsibility, responsibility to learn the ways of God and to walk in it. And the only way you do that is through the study of his word. On your own. You know, a lot of us deceive ourselves so much. You come to church one Sunday morning and you think you have had something. And then they read one Bible passage to you. And then you say, yes, I'm okay. You are not okay. Can you eat only Sunday morning and be okay for the week? Of, of course, you won't have this kind of stomach. You have, in, in, you have, uh, you know, concave and complex, complex. Yeah, you all will be like this. So, so that's, that's what we do. We 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 live with a consciousness of what is not real. My job is to raise faithful ministers of the gospel, and that's why I'm telling you all this. Getting at his word. Having a drive for his word. Let me give us one more. Faithful servants are also true followers. And I tell you the church is in need of followers. The Lord wants to be masters. But only followers are qualified to be masters. And in any way, Jesus didn't come for masters. He came for followers. You remember when he made the disciples, he said what to them? Matthew chapter 4. Follow me. And in doing so, I will make you. What will he make us? Fulani people? There are no his men there. He will make us. Oh! Yes, I'm an Ogoni man this morning. Because they are all fishermen. There is no farm in their village. Do you have farm? Can you farm on water? They are all fishermen. Fishermen and fisherwomen. I'm not talking of you people. You don't know what we are talking about. They are all fishermen. He said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Do you know what it means to follow? Following could be the easiest and the cheapest thing to do. In any way, that's for somebody who is humble, but can be the most difficult thing for the arrogant. Because following me, you just put your feet where I put mine when I remove it, and you are going. You don't even need to know the road. The person is the one who you are following, right? But of course, if you are the arrogant and the proud, say, excuse me, wait, wait, wait. I don't think that one you are going is correct. Are you following me? Follow me. And the same word is still sounding from heaven today. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me and I will make you. There's only one thing he said he will make us in the Bible, fishers of men. But we are not really we truly fishing men today. Like I said something that he asked me to ask you two Sundays ago. Don't let 2019 go without you saying, I got one soul saved. Just ordinary one in 365 days. That's, that's, that should not be heard of. But many of us go through life that we will, that's not even in our minds. What is in our mind is what is going to give us, you know? What is going to do for us. And how is going to kill our enemies. God is not a murderer. <laughs> he must kill all our enemies. Eh? Jesus is Lord. Remember, Ephesians 2 verse 10 tells us, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. He, he, he fabricated us to work for him. Give me Ephesians 2. Oh, okay. Is it 2.20 or oh, 2.10? Sorry. Sorry. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. That means... He had work to do, right? And he fabricated the implement. Do you get the picture now? You are that implement. What another language can I use for implement? Engineer. 
No. no. Oh my God. So, so what's, what's the PhD, PhD you are doing for now? now? No, he's, he's an, an engineer, engineer and, and he's even doing, doing PhD. PhD. He should know all these things of art. Like yes? Huh? Execute. Okay? Close. Implement. I want another word. Huh? You see, that's a Nigerian. She knows where she's going, though, but she tried to connect with it. It's like a tool. Just tell us his tool, we know. But a Nigerian can't go that way. He must, he, he must go that way like this first and then, and then come back. <laughs> eh? No, I'm all getting, getting it now. now. Amen? That's who you are. You are an instrument. You are an equipment. You are a tool. You, you get, get my point? point? Uh, no, I'm not talking to you. You didn't give me one. To work with. You are not just to live your life the way you want. You are his workmanship. That means what he worked out to carry out. What he carved out. You, you get, get my point? point? To do something. So do it. Amen? Amen? Jesus is Lord. And, and that's, that's what he's going to ask you. How well you have done it when you stand before him. So my question this morning as I close is, are you a follower? Are you a fisher of men? Because a true follower is a fisher of men. Jesus is Lord. I want to see men and women in this church who are conscious of their heavenly status and conscious, like I will if I'm able to get there next week, of their citizenship of heaven. I'm not an ordinary person. I'm not one like others. I'm from heaven. And here to carry out an assignment for my king. Amen? And in so doing, you equip yourself with enough knowledge and to live that life. Amen? And operate accordingly. Jesus is Lord. Let me see if I can add one more. I still have a few time. Faithful servants also share the mysteries they have learned from him. You get my point? That's why he used the word stewards. You know, when you go to a, a restaurant, the stewards wait to serve orders, right? With the meal, with all that is required. Now that you have acquired that knowledge, because we have it all in one, a faithful servant will also be eager to share that knowledge. And you know, the mystery of this kingdom is that it is what you give that multiplies. And it's, it's not just about money, it's in everything. So the knowledge you keep Sharing also multiplies in you. Amen? I can tell you from experience, and you can ask those who, the first time you want to, if you don't do constantly, preach to somebody. How was it? The first time you preach to somebody. Huh? Is what? Nervous? What again? How was it? Abai, have you preached to somebody before? You've never preached to anybody? Eh? I'm not, preach. Yes. And so why did you say no? 
So the first time you do you did it, how did you feel? The first time, okay? The first time you preach, how do you do it? Hmm? Where I'm going is simple. When you do it first, timid, nervous, right? Not too sure of what to say. You do it second time. You do it third time. Then all of a sudden, you don't even feel it. You get my point? Because you have been sharing, the grace is multiplying. You get my point? I remember... I think it was 1983, I was a student then in the university, and um, after I got saved, I got saved 12th November 1982, we have a campus fellowship on, on, on the university there, Christian Union, and then they told me, uh, the next fellowship you are going to preach. Oh my God. I couldn't sleep for days because I was going to preach. I still remember the topic I chose, but what I said, I don't remember anything. The topic I chose is the Lord, our righteousness from Jeremiah. But I was shivering. I, I don't know how many minutes they gave me, but I don't think I used half of the minutes. You get my point? But then you can wake me up from sleep today if I preach inside my sleep. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And that's what a lot of us don't get. What you give multiplies. It's the same with the word of God that you have received. Are you following me? It's the same. I tell people, you some people as guinea pigs. Share it with them in the office. You are doing an experiment. You understand what I mean by that? Just share it today, share it tomorrow, share it. Before you know it, you can stop sharing it. Where you think you lack what to say, before you know it, you can't finish with the time you have. But when you don't, as a faithful servant, it's our duty to keep sharing the word of God that we have received. Amen? Paul said, for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me my job. It's my duty. Sharing the good news. Be a carrier of good news. Amen? The, in the world in which we live in, you know when they talk of journalism, they say only bad thing is good news. is the news in journalism. That's why they look for where they just kill somebody. When they kill somebody for the next 38 hours, everybody, that's all they are talking about. The people who got well, the people who did good, I don't know who is interested in that one. <laughs> eh? ah. Glory to God. Share the good news. Whatever you have received of his word, share it. And you see how he keeps refreshing you. You see how he keeps replenishing you. You see how you know more than you knew before you started sharing it. Eh? That's what we're talking about. So you have a whole week ahead of you. Look for somebody to share what you have learned. With. As they come across you, that's what you mean by the Great Commission. Go disciple them. Go teach them. Everything that I've taught you, that's what he said. And finally, for today, I just want to close this and jump some. I need to let you understand how God makes faithful stewards. Yeah, you won't like this one. When you bring gold, how many of you have seen raw gold? Yeah, it's in video. Everything is in video these days. Raw gold. What is gold in America? Yeah. Raw gold. You've seen it before? Well, you will not really be seen. You have to be at the mind to see it. But does it look, those who have even seen it in video, does it look like gold? But before it can be golden, it has to go through fire. 
Eh? Has to go through the full Lani land. Anybody that can pass through full Lani land, any Christian that can pass through full Lani land and come out on the other side will be a proper Christian. Fire. The furnace, he said, there is a place where they find it is for gold. The challenges of your life, they are to make you better under God, not to destroy you. Are you following me? That will make you prove what you have, who you are, what you know. <laughs> the Bible says there is no temptation greater than can come against you, greater than you can bear. These are some things, I mean, you come across. I know somebody who well, asked, what is your problem? You don't come to church again. He said, I'm just tired of God because nothing is working. You get my point? Just one little thing, you don't see them again. Uh, they don't understand it. He said, he made the captain of our salvation perfect through suffering. You don't like that word. There's a scripture I read to myself, and I will show you. First Peter chapter 5, verse 10. There's a sequence there. <laughs> you know, when the mother of James and John came to Jesus, they said, I want my son, want to sit at your right hand. You remember, I want to sit at your left hand. Uh, Jesus said, you are joking. Do you know what you go through to get to that place? <laughs> First Peter, look at it, everyone. But the God of all grace, who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. Number one, after that you have what? Is that in the Bible? No. No. I mean, I don't think it's correct. After he has prospered you and given you some millions, you know. <laughs> after that you have suffered. And I've told you, don't take that word suffering as if. No, 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 no. Uh, there is, I have not found the proper word to use. But after that, you have suffered a while. Then look at the next statement. Make you what? Is that in your Bible? Or it's only in English Bible? I think it's not in American Bible. Some people don't understand. I want to get you to a place where you are a settled, established citizen of heaven. Nothing moves you here. After that you have suffered a while, make you perfect. Then he will establish you. He will strengthen you. And give you your place. That's that word, settle. You know when they settle you, they give you your place. Everybody wants the glory, but they don't know the story. Nor do they even know the way to it. Any little thing, they say, God, where are you? He doesn't go anywhere. Even if he wants to go anywhere, he can't. You know why? The Bible says he feels all in all. If you are filled, you understand me? You are filled all in all. Where can you go? Nowhere. God, where are you now? <laughs> He's everywhere. He's there. Amen? You are faced with challenges. Then sometimes you don't even see some people... For some time in church, what is going on? He said, oh, pastor, I'm sorry. I've been going through some hard times. So you can't come to church again because we are going through hard times. So is it where you are now that we solve the hard times for you? Because they don't understand it. Look at it. Hebrews 2 verse 10. Oh, Jesus. For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect to sufferers. Through what he went through. I want you to understand that God is working your case out. But let patience have a perfect work, the Bible says. If you are a true follower, if you are technically following him by faith, you are coming out gloriously on the other side. I say when they say they will kill you tomorrow, don't die today. That will be suicide. Let tomorrow come. You, you understand me? 
we tactically by faith and do the issues of life. And God makes us that way. And as we walk with him, develops us that way. And as we continue with him, perfects us that way. And then puts you in a position where you can pull others out. Because you went through it. Amen? Put you in a position where somebody is crying and you are laughing. So why? I say, I know this is not an issue. You say, Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. I say, I've gone through that one too before. So what happened? I, I, I'm here, am I not? Do you get my point? Those are issues with God. And you will come out gloriously on the other side. We need faith and perseverance to walk with God. Amen. And that's why you must build your faith. Develop yourself. Amen. David, in closing. No, I, don't even, I shouldn't even use David. I will use one man called Joseph. You all know the story. Right? Joseph. <laughs> he saw a great vision. And then... He was in that trouble for 13 years. It's not just two seconds. He was 17 when they sold him. He was 30 when he became prime minister. But can you compare the pain to the glory? But you see, in all that journey, Joseph walked with God. Job, his wife, told him, cause God and die. What kind of God is it that you are going through all this? But then Job had twice as much as he lost. There is nothing God needs from you that you think is the reason why he's punishing you. Your blood can't save anybody. Even you can't save yourself. You get my point? But when we walk with God by faith, <laughs> it brings you out gloriously. Someone will see the glory of God this week. Amen. Someone will encounter the beauty of salvation this week. Someone will see great deliverance that the world thought was not possible this week. Because you see, nothing dies in his hands. <laughs> nothing. He is life. Amen? God is life. Nothing dies in his hands. Rise up on your feet. Jesus is Lord. I want you to go out this week as a citizen of heaven, bringing the life of God everywhere you are. You are a solution provider. You are not part of the problem. You are sent to effect solutions. So nothing will be beyond you this week. As you get back to work, get back to your communities, get back to the people you live with, you will be a solution provider. It will not be beyond you. Whatever confronts them and brings them down will fall at your feet. Because you are from a kingdom that is from above. And he that is from above is above all. So I see you above all the challenges of this week. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for everyone here this morning. Thank you for the refreshing of the spirit. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amazing grace, I pray you release into this life this morning. And I say, go out of this place today. They will display their citizenship of the kingdom of heaven in power and in glory bringing tremendous results with it in jesus mighty name anything contrary to the beauty of salvation in anyone's life here this morning i stand in that same authority of the kingdom and i cut them short rebuke the hand of the evil one rebuke the hand of the devourer and command total freedom here he said ought not this daughter of abraham whom satan has bound these 18 years be freed as citizens of heaven, freedom is our portion. So in every way and every manner that you have been overlabored, I speak freedom for you this morning. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Put your hands.